The older we get, the harder it is for us to fully rest. The CDC says a third of American adults do not get enough sleep. Poor sleep is linked to Alzheimer's disease as well as trouble with concentration, memory, and the immune system. Dr. Andrew Steam is a sleep specialist with the Line of Health. He's here to talk about what you can do to get the rest that you need. Welcome, thanks for coming on. Uh, my pleasure, thank you for having me. So number one, why aren't we adults getting enough sleep? Because we think we have better things to do. I mean, ultimately, sleep becomes the first thing we sacrifice. My poor wife does most of her jobs to run the house after her bedtime, because that's the only chance she gets to do them. Yep. I have to wake up before I want to, to go to work and do my job, and that's the price I pay for being a professional. We all have those excuses. Sleep is the thing we can sacrifice. But we shouldn't be, but people do it. So how do we kind of calm our brains down? Maybe we need to go to sleep a little bit early. You mentioned that was the part earlier. It can be tougher to fall asleep if you need to early. What can we do to kind of prepare ourselves for that moment? Well, that's a pretty typical problem for those of us that have to wake up before we want to, is then we have to go to bed before we want to. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to go to bed before our body's desired bedtime. Also, some of us just have difficulty turning off our brains. That to-do list, the first time it creeps into our brain is when it's quiet when and in the dark. you're sitting there at night looking up. It's a perennial problem in my business. I make a lot of patients out of those that just lay there and can't turn off their brains. So the first thing to do is to create a relaxing routine. Don't bring those thoughts to bed. Try to deal with them earlier. Some people recommend having something they call a worry hour. So I'm gonna do all my worrying early in the day <laughs> so that when bedtime comes, my worrying is done. Um, have a routine uh, where there's a relaxing preparation, meditation, prayer, something that kind of helps you unwind before you go to bed. And then keep it consistent. And another thing too is, and I like to associate my bed with, or even just my bedroom, it's just sleeping. I'm not doing any much, I don't have a TV in my room. I mean, I, I am guilty of maybe having my phone in front of me, but there are certain things maybe to do while you're, or not to do while you're in bed to make sure you can fall asleep easier. That's a, a wonderful thing to not have a screen in your room. Our adolescents, as an example, when they have a screen in their room, on average, they get 40 to 60 minutes of less sleep per day because they're distracted by their screens. Um, unfortunately now, our screens are becoming so portable. Your phone is one. I mean, mm -hmm. YouTube videos, Netflix, Hulu, it's all right there to watch at your fingertips. So don't have it that close. Um, if you need your phone in your bedroom for whatever reason, it's your alarm or you're on call, like I can be sometimes, yeah. keep it far enough away that it's not a temptation. The bedroom should be sacrosanct. I've heard of people even going for I call it old school now, an actual alarm clock so that maybe they don't get so reliant on their phones. When it comes to sleeping in, I might think, oh, if I only got five hours and six hours and during the week, I'll just get eight on the weekend. Does the, can you really make that up? No, uh, you can't. And studies have shown that pretty predictably, that the damage is done. There are two consequences to not getting enough sleep. We're aware of the short-term consequences. We feel that. Our mood is different. We're more irritable. Our memory's not as good. You don't get that back. If you made a mistake at work because you didn't get enough sleep, you can't undo that mistake. If you're snappy with your wife because you're more irritable than you should be, mm -hmm. you can't take that back. <laughs> Feelings <laughs> are still hurt, no matter how many times I try. <laughs> Um, and then we catch up on the weekends, and while our moods may improve um, on the weekends, but there's also physiologic consequences. People who don't get enough sleep have increased risk of some of those health hazards you pointed out, and you can't make up for that. So you would suggest, as best as possible, knowing that on the weekends we do different things, try to have a, a set sleep schedule seven days a week? Absolutely. To the best of your ability, you should sleep a stable window of time that's about seven to nine hours in duration. Okay. A lot to shoot for, but we appreciate the advice, Dr. Steen. Thank you Anytime. so much. Get to bed soon, everybody. <laughs> for more information on getting better sleep, go to WCCO.com.